His name was Herb. Um, so in case he ever listens to this, he'll know I'm talking about him. And he was like the number one jerk of all time. Talk about idiots, you know. So, okay, here's a guy. Maybe I should go into a little stuff about him because a lo- he, he relates to a lot of people who have herpes. Now, I think he had both, too. I think he had oral and genital. You know, a lot of people get both at the same time. Anyway, um, Herb had a strain of herpes that ha- he, where he had continuous outbreaks. He was never without a herpes outbreak. Or oh my, he might have a day or two when it would sort of subside, but then back it would come. They were on the heels of each other, these outbreaks. Now, you see, my herpes, which I got in 66, you know, back in 66, they didn't have medical tests, treatments. Um, I went to Jackson Memorial Hospital. I was living with a nurse, (laughs) and I got it from another nurse. Neither of them knew anything about it. (laughs) I also got a staph infection, and this... You know, one of the nurses told me, well, take decomycin. It's a staph infection. So that's what I thought it was. I went to Jackson Memorial Hospital, and like 15 interns looked at me. They were calling each other in. Come here. This guy's got herpes. Come have a look. You know, because like I was happy to entertain them, you know. (laughs) So I said, okay, what do we do with it? And he said, nothing. It's incurable. He just looked me right in the face and said, nothing. It's incurable. You can't do anything about it. And boy, was I in pain. You know, because my first outbreak was really awful, it was huge, and I just, I was dying. I mean, I was 22 and scared and upset that I had herpes, and I just wanted to do as little as possible for myself. I was the typical, you know, sur- part of the surly lot of herpes sufferers, you know, the idiots, you know. I was one of them, you know. I, what, I didn't know what I, what I was doing with, you know, with, with herpes. God, I, and I just was saying, Lord, why me, you know. Anyway, um, huh. so Herb, but see, my herpes ramped down. Okay, this is what I wanted to tell you about Herb. My herpes ramped down, and it, it started to be like I get outbreaks like every three months or something, you know, and I, so I wouldn't be able to have sex for a little while. So what? Who cares, you know? I mean, I was, you know, okay with that, you know, at that point. Because I had sex every day anyway, you know, when I wasn't having an outbreak. So it really didn't matter to me if I had to go without it for a little while. And uh, I read in The Coming Plague in the mid-1990s that um, people would take these drugs, you know, to stop outbreaks like a cyclovir or now it's, I guess, vancomycin. Oh, well, not vancom... No, that's an antibiotic. Um, Valtrex, uh, that's what it is. And, you know, they take these drugs, you know, and uh, <laughs> when they stop taking the drug... See, I never took any drugs, but when they stop taking the drug, they discover that their strain of herpes has mutated. So now, instead of having outbreaks every three months, they have these outbreaks like Herb had. And then they pass that on. That new mutated strain then becomes the herpes that they pass on to their next sexual partner. And this was what Herb caught. He caught one of these strains. He never took drugs for it, but he caught the strain in its mutated state. So he was um, really in trouble. So I showed him how to cure it, and he stopped having outbreaks. And, you know, I, you know, I talked to him, you know, every few days, and he didn't have any outbreaks. And I figured, wow, this is great. You know, I really, uh, I've accomplished something here. And then I said, okay, I think I'll move on, do some other things. And I didn't talk to him for a few months. And I called him up, and I started chatting with him, and we were going along talking, and then he told me he was having a herpes outbreak. And I said, wow, I thought you cured it, you know. And he said, oh, yeah. He said, well, you know, I did, but now I have an outbreak. And I said, well, why didn't you take it out? Because then it would be gone, you know. And he said, well, I wanted to not do what you showed me to see if it was really cured. So now here I'm going to tell you point blank. It isn't. Okay? It's not cured. It's never cured. 
it's cured, but it isn't cured. You don't have outbreaks anymore, and at some point it dies off, like HIV and all these other things. You know, I think that some viruses, like CMV, okay, like, you know, Elizabeth, see, she got her negative medical tests on three of these viruses, okay, herpes, Epstein-Barr, and CMV. Her turnaround time was 10 days, okay? I expect when she got that negative medical test, she still had the herpes. Now, I don't know if you noticed her email dialogue, you know, also was there where she went back a year later and got tested for those things again, and she was still negative. But what I think, I think that the CMV probably died off the minute she cured it. You know, with, within an hour, she never had to th check herself for CMV again, unless she got exposed to it again, then she'd have to check herself. But it was gone, okay? That's what I think about cytomegalovirus. <clears throat> Epstein-Barr and herpes, no. I think that if Elizabeth tested negative a year later, it was probably because Elizabeth, as you can hear from her, you know, it's pretty obvious from her voice and what she's talking about, that Elizabeth is a very studious type, responsible type person who's like probably at least in her 30s. And she's also not from the U.S., which means she takes a lot of these things a lot more seriously. And, you know, like people who are not from the U.S. often are harder workers and they are, you know, you know, willing to do a lot more for themselves and they don't expect things to be handed to them on a silver platter, you know. And so she probably kept pounding away at it and it probably really did either die off or at least she was still doing it, you know. Maybe it was going to take her another year to be really free of those viruses, but she was going to be testing negative medically because, she, you know, she wasn't making antigens for them. That's all, you know. She, you know, she whacked them down to where they were just living inside of her, you know, her neural synapses in her brain somewhere. <laughs> so that, and where they will, that's where they will stay till they realize that they can't do their dirty work anymore and there's no reason to be around and they'll just finally give up. And, you know, I, I, I just have a feeling if these things can't outbreak, they can't survive more than a few years. But maybe they can just live a long time. You know, I was actually reading about another disease, cholera, you know, and cholera's like that. You know, cholera, cholera will get into plankton and, uh, you know, like people drop rotting corpses from cholera victims into, you know, rivers in, in Bangladesh and they, you know, end up with the plankton that gets into those ends up in the sea, which then infects people when they eat ceviche in Chile, <laughs> you know, that's how they have a cholera epidemic because it travels in the fish. It can actually do that and you just, you know, add plain water and heat and bingo, instant cholera. So these diseases can do these things. And I think that we have to realize that we are dealing with deadly and dangerous opponents and that you know, maybe I have more to say about this that I haven't really covered. So maybe I should actually uh, see because what I want to tell you, huh?